So in this video, I'm going to give you two tips that'll make you more profitable in 2023. The first one, work during the peak busy times. That's right. And number two, minimize the miles on your car. So let's get into the details of what those two tips really mean. And you can apply these learnings to yourself because every situation is different. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to skip past all those learning mistakes that I've made? You can learn from my experience and instead be ahead of the game when it comes to making money. So I'm happy to share these tips with you. <laughs> now you're right, here's the disclaimer, right? I am not a tax professional, a financial advisor, an expert in any of the gig economy apps. But what I do bring to the table is experience. I've been doing food delivery and rideshare part-time for the last four years. Most recently since the pandemic, I've been doing it about 15 hours per week doing food delivery, and that's primarily food delivery apps from restaurants like Uber Eats, Grubhub, and then doing grocery shopping, that's Instacart, and then I've been doing package delivery and groceries on Amazon Flex, and it's been a lot of fun. And don't forget Corner Shop, even though they went away. All right, let's get into it. So think about it. This is not hard to understand. If you want to make more money, then you need to be able to deliver during peak times. And when is this? Thanks. When would you order food? Think about it, right? It's around Good key afternoon. meal times, and you'd probably order a few minutes before you wanted to eat, knowing that it takes time for that food delivery driver to bring your food. So think about that. Be available to deliver food during these times when people are going to be ordering. And it goes the same for grocery delivery on Instacart. How often do you just go in the kitchen and fix some food? Well, don't you have to prepare first? You have to know what you want to get, go shopping, get all the groceries, and then bring them home and put them away. So when you add in this extra time, be available to do grocery deliveries before the meal times. So it's not a hard concept, it's just thinking, when would you like to eat? And then being available to meet that need, either through food delivery or grocery shopping. And guess what, if you happen to be doing rideshare, when do people need rides? So be available before that time, and that way you're able to give them a ride to where they need to go. It's just a fact of life. I'm only available during the day a couple times per week. If you can make yourself more available, then you will make more money than me. Because there have been many times where orders are flooding in and, and I just can't take the order and so I have to go offline. What I do is maximize the time. Even if it's slow, I try to maximize the amount of money that I can make for when I'm available to work. And this would be the same for you. You know, there's times where it's really slow. I'm not just going to quit and go home. And so what I do is I'll find errands to run or if there's something I need to do and by going to a different area for that reason, then hopefully I call it going fishing. I hope that I'm going to catch something by being there. I don't just drive around aimlessly or go to many cities hoping for orders because I'm going to be using a ton of miles on my car and that's just an expense that I'm paying for and I'm not getting reimbursed for. Here's my second tip on how to be profitable in 2023. You need to minimize the miles on your car. How do I know this? Well, the government agency, the IRS, has set the standard mileage rate at 58.5 cents the first half of this year. And then after July, they raised it to 62 and a half cents to account for increased fuel costs, as I'm sure you're all very aware of. You know, the average uh, price of gas here in California for last year was $4.40. That's quite a bit. So yeah, they know what it takes to operate your car, right? They're a tax agency. They want us to be successful so that they can tax us. So what's included in that standard mileage rate? You have things like fuel, which is our highest cost, vehicle maintenance, all those repairs you make, car insurance, which we all have to pay. And incidentally, I don't count the car insurance against my expenses because I do this part time and I'm going to pay car insurance anyway, but that is included. And then fourth is vehicle depreciation. Our cars are not getting more valuable as time goes by and so they account for depreciation as well. The key thing that you need to remember right now, if you're not making more money, at least for your vehicle at that standard mileage rate, 
guaranteed you're losing money because that's just to cover the cost of using your vehicle. What about your time? Aren't we worth money? We need to be at least making a good hourly rate plus covering our vehicle expenses. That only makes business sense, right? In food delivery, think of how many times per day you're starting, stopping your vehicle, turning as you drive, and parking in multiple places. I've noticed a lot of things break on my car a lot faster than normal, and guaranteed, you know, tires wear and tear from all the turning, door handles, you name it. Now again, my car is a little bit old. If you have a newer car, it's not going to uh, break down on you as much like this, but it's something to think about. When you drive normally during the day, just for life in general, you're actually not putting a ton of wear and tear on your car. But when you're doing food delivery, you're using your car quite a bit and all the parts of your car. So if you rank them, I would say doing grocery shopping apps uses your car less because you're in the store more. Next would be doing food delivery because you're out driving around for all the food. And then rideshare would put the most miles on your car because you're driving passengers around. And this just makes sense. And I found that doing grocery shopping, that, that pays quite a bit for me and my earnings, but we're gonna get to that next. All right, it's time to get into the recap of my earnings for 2022. Take my experience and apply it to you. In my case, I track everything. Now I will say I have used the standard deduction the last few years because it's paid more, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. But in order to know that, I needed to track everything, and so I've been doing that the whole time. And I'll compare the ratio of my business miles to my personal miles, and then deduct that percentage from my maintenance costs. And that's something that I didn't really do in my previous videos. And you know, it was probably off by a couple thousand, but you get the general idea. So I'm gonna fix that this year. I do keep track of all my fuel receipts. Every day that I drive, I will fill up the car first and then go do all the runs. And then when I end my time, I fill up the car. And I'll write down how many trips I did. Say it's Uber Eats, Grubhub, Amazon Flex. I write it on the receipt. And then every quarter, I scan them all, and that way at the end of the year, I can add up all the different trips that I've done, and I know exactly how much gas I've spent for all my business miles. Last year, I spent $2,092 on gas. This year, I drove 7,349 miles for business, and then I drove 10,221 for personal. And so when you do the percentage, that comes out to 42% of my miles total were for business. I had $2,055 in maintenance costs, and then you times that by 42%, that's where I get the $836. So my total expenses for 2022 was $2,955. And 863 of that was for maintenance, and 2,092 was for gas. I earned a total of $11,431 in 2022. That was pretty good. So when you subtract out my itemized expenses, you can see here that I made $8,476. Now, when you look at the standard deduction, I get a much better tax break on that. In this case, using the standard mileage rate, I have a lower taxable income at $7,115. And I do want to use that number. And again, remember how I said I don't count my car insurance? Well, this includes that and depreciation. So I'm going to go with the standard mileage rate this year. And you know what? The standard mileage rate works out, I would say, this way for most people. So you should consider it as well. So when I do the math here for the standard mileage deduction, I just use the 58 and a half cents. You know, it'll be a little bit more. I think it was like another two or $300. But for the purpose of this video, that's close enough. So I estimate that I work about 15 hours per week, and that's the same as last year. And if you look, that means that I'm earning $9.12 per hour before I pay taxes. And the math works out, as you can see. 15 hours times 52 weeks is 780 hours. 7,115 divided by 780 is 912. And that's where I get my hourly rate that I'm calculating. And again, I still have to pay taxes on that. 
All right, up next, here's the breakdown of all the apps that I ran during 2022 and the results, the breakdown of percentage of my pay. And let's get into it. As you can see here, and I did them already in order, on Instacart, I did 174 orders, and that's 23% of my total orders for all the gig apps. And you can see I made $4,175, and that's 37% of my total earnings came from Instacart. So you can see that they pay quite well here in my market. Next, I did Uber Eats. I had 301 deliveries, and that ended up being 39% of my trips, you know, the different runs that I had done total for gig work. Earnings came in at $3,413, and that's 30% of my total earnings. Up next is Grubhub. I did 245 trips with them, and that was 32% of the total trips that I did. I made $2,715, and that was 24% of my income. Next, Amazon Flex. I like those orders anytime I can get them. I did 44 trips with them, and I count all the stops. That was 6% of the total gig economy runs that I did, and that was $804, coming to 7% of my earnings. Lastly, Corner Shop, you know, Uber Eats <laughs> shut them down, and I have other videos on that. I did eight trips with them. That's 1% of the total trips. I made $323, and that's 3% of my total earnings. And as you can see there, the total orders that I did in 2022 is 772, and then the total earnings is roughly $11,431. Overall, 2022 was a great year. So what do you think of those results? You know, every year I do reduce the amount of miles that I drive, and this year has proven that as well. And that's something that I'm very conscientious of and I want to keep doing. Keep this in mind for yourself. That first tip, work when it's busy. When everybody's ordering food and needing rides, that's when you need to be out there to earn money. Next is always be aware of the miles on your car because you're paying those costs. No one else is going to pay them. So you at least need to be reimbursed and have enough earnings to get the value of uh, using your car. Because if you had a job at McDonald's, you know, yeah, you go to work, but you're not using your car to work there. So the same thing applies. Make enough money to cover that. And on top of that, make enough money that you get a good hourly rate. Is $9.12 something that you would be proud to earn? I think you can do much better. I know that I can. I'm really limited by my availability, but sadly that's not going to change. So I'm grateful to be able to earn the money that I do, and I'm going to keep doing it. Incidentally, I try to find other ways of making money online, um, at night, doing things where I'm not using my car, and that's something that I'm going to keep pursuing. Have you ever considered doing rideshare? Well, coming up, I have these two videos on unaccompanied minors. I made those when I was doing rideshare, and it gives you reflection on, is it worth the money taking kids when they're not accompanied with an adult? My name is Russ. Please like the video and like the channel, and I appreciate your attention today, and I'll see you in my next video.